Excuse me. Good evening, friends. We are happy to be with you again. We thank God for His blessings on us. We are human and sometimes we become ill. But as Brother Charleston Boyd, one of our brothers that come on every so often, we do want you to know that he has a saying that God is good all the time. And God is good all the time to me. I thank God for the fact that we have men that are willing to share with us in the teaching of God's divine word. I regret that I haven't been with you a while, but we have to follow doctor's orders. And so we say to you, we are happy that you are tuning us in again. One thing that I want to say to many members of the church uh, and those that are not members of the church is this. Christ built the church and he recommended that you and I meet him on the first day of the week at the Lord's church and that we be ready to serve him and to do those things that are pleasing and acceptable in God's sight. And so we say to you uh, that are laying at home in your bed, get up, get dressed, and come out to the services of the Lord every Lord's day. Now that's the given commandment of God that we meet together on the Lord's day, that we might eat and listen to the Word of God, take it and use it in our hearts, doing that thing that's pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God. And so we encourage you to get up and give God the time. Time is running out. Look like there's trouble everywhere. And so we encourage you not to get caught outside of the Lord, but be caught in the Lord Jesus Christ doing God's divine will. And so I want to thank those who are preparing these uh, tapes for us. And uh, Sister Gaines does a great job. So I say to her, may God bless you, and may he continue to keep your spirit in the Lord's spirit. And we want all those who are tuning us in, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning us in. And we're going to do our very best to give you God's word where you can understand it and understand that the reason <clears throat> we have the church, please excuse me, is because God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so I'm, I'm encouraging you to turn and look in the scripture and let us study God's word together. Let's do it together. And if you got your Bible, pull it up and follow me in the scriptures, and we will give you the very best that we can out of God's divine book. Now, I'm not supposed to teach anything other than the Word of God. And so I'm going to do my very best and give you the, the Word of God. If you will, let me read a verse to you. This is the Grand Avenue Church of Christ at 619 North Grand Avenue. I'm C.E. Shaw. Uh, my son has taken the ministry, and we ask that you tune us in on Sundays because the young man is doing an outstanding and outstanding job bringing the Word of God. So and encourage us with your presence and encourage us with your prayers that God's Word might be heard. The Bible says, and this is where we are coming from today, we're looking at Matthew chapter 16, and we're going to look at verse number 13 down through verse number 18. Now when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea of Philippi, he asked his disciples, 
Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And Simon Peter answered, as some say, some say that you are John the Baptist. Well, we know Christ wasn't John the Baptist. And uh, others say that you was Elijah. We know he wasn't Elijah. And others say you're Jeremiah, but he wasn't Jeremiah. Then he goes on to say, and listen to this, and some say you're one of the prophets. Isn't that clear? Now that's from the scripture. Matthew 16 and verse 18, uh, 13 down through verse number 18. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but who, whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered. Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And listen what he said. The Son of the living God. And Jesus, Jesus says this. He said, Blessed art thou, Simon for Jonah. He said, uh, Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. We need to, uh, we need to stick with what heaven is saying and not so much what man is saying. Man has an opinion, but man's opinion is not what God wants us to give. He wants us to give the word of God. But my Father who is in heaven, it wasn't some earthly man that came up with this idea of who Christ is. And the Bible says, and I tell unto you, Peter, that upon this rock, upon the statement that you made, he's going to build his church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then I like this. Whatever, Peter, listen to this. Whatever you shall bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven. So we, we, we must listen to the word of God. Let us preach the word of God. Now, for the New Testament people, we're not living under the law, but we are living under the New Testament teaching from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I'm saying to you, remember that God knows what he's doing. Christ knows what he's doing. Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. And because I have studied it, I know what I'm doing. Thank you. And I'm, I'm saying to you that this is the way God wanted. Now, if you got your Bibles, let's go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 5. And I do want you to look at this and and follow it very carefully so that you won't be caught up in the group of people that think they are right and they're not doing it the way the Bible say for us to do this. First John chapter 1, uh, chapter 5, excuse me, please excuse me, chapter 5 verses 6 and verse 7 and 8. This is he that came by water and by blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, that's it. Not by water only, but he want us to know that he came by water and blood. And Jesus is the man who hung on the cross, gave his life that you and I might have eternal life. Now, you can't have that eternal life in any place you want to go. you got to follow Jesus. Jesus is the one that came and erected this church. And he wants you and I to do what's right. Then he goes on to say, not by water only, but by water and by blood. It is the spirit that bears witness. Yes, the spirit bears witness that the word spoken from the Bible is truth. And I want you to know it's truth as well. And he bears witness of this truth. For there are three, with me now, stay with me. There are three <clears throat> that bear record in heaven. Now let's see who they are. 
And you're not gonna find a human man's name that. He when you when you look at the scripture, you see what he says. There are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father. Well, I'm a father, but I'm not the father of Jesus Christ. And whoever you call yourself, whatever your name is, if you've got children, you are not the father that Jesus is talking about. But the father which is in heaven. The word, the thing that we're trying to get people to listen to is the Bible, God's divine word. And we need to, we need to pay attention to that because... If you don't see it in the Bible, leave it alone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Leave it alone because we need the truth. And the truth will make us free. Not 8, 31, 32. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, you get that? And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Now that's the way it ought to be in the church we ought to all be one we ought to all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among us and so if we stick with the bible god's divine word then we can make sure that when we die we can go home to live with god listen to verse number eight and there are three that bear witness in earth the spirit the water and the blood and these three are in agreement with one. So I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you, you don't, you, it's, uh, you're not going to get, uh, well, I'm sorry, God, I, did, I didn't know that. Well, it means that no, I, I, just think, I just think it doesn't make any difference. It does make a difference. God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit are the only ones got the right right now. To make the difference. Amen. Amen. In the Bible, Psalms 68 and 11, please listen to how this word is pointed out. The Lord gave the word, and great was the company of them that publisheth it. Now, God has always had those people that he want to do his will. Those people who will do his will according to being born again. You got to be born again. Not the way you want it, but the way the Lord wanted it. And if you, if you are seeking to live with God throughout ceaseless ages in heaven, you will not to be born again down here. That's why, that's why I, I push all the time that uh, the problem with the uh, society today is that society today feel like they have as much power as God, but they don't have that. They do not have that. And I'm saying that when you search the scriptures, for in them, where? Well, in the scriptures, you think you have eternal life. But I want you to understand, and the scriptures are they that testify of Christ. Yes, they can testify of Christ because God so loved the world, again I say, that he sent his son into this world that they might have eternal life. And not only have eternal life, and the scriptures are they which testify of Christ. You need somebody that's going to be able to testify of God's divine son. Invest in the good sound Bible and study God's divine Bible. Now, now, now a, a lot of these, uh, these people uh, have Bibles that kind of say a little different than what the Lord say. But I want you to invest in a good Bible uh, that you can have. I, I like to study from, and when I'm teaching, I like to teach from the King James Version of the Bible. But I'm, I'm just saying to you, be careful what you hear. Because if you don't hear what God has said, <clears throat> you're going to find, excuse me again, you're going to find problems in your life. I urge you uh, to keep in mind that John chapter 14 and verse number 15 says these words, If you love me, this is Jesus talking, if you love me, keep my commandments. Whose commandment? It's Christ's commandment.
command. God gave it to Christ, and Christ brought it to us. And the and when the disciples were were working with the Lord, they did what Christ told them to do. And so, and then he goes on to say in verse number sixteen, and I will pray that the Father. This is Jesus saying, I'll pray that the Father shall give you another. Confident. You know why? Because I'm going to have to leave here. I'm going to have to leave. And he's going to send you another comforter that may abide with you forever. Now, he only abides in Christians. Hello. He only abides in the Christian. And so the true thing for you and I is to get in the Lord. Now, how do you do that? I'm going to tell you in a few minutes, but I don't mind telling you right now. You got to be born again of water and of spirit. My second point I want you to look at, uh, uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best to guide you to see for yourself what God's Word is saying. True love is of God, so do God's will. He said now, if you love me, keep his commandment. That's what Christ says. If you love me, keep my commandment. The commandment that God has given him to come down here. He came down. He suffered for men, beating him, talking about him, spitting on him, and doing all kinds of things against him to just try and keep him off God. But you can't keep him off God. He's going to always be there and he's going to always be there for you and for me. I was, I was watching the news a few Sundays ago when Black History Week came up. And as I was watching the news, then another program came on. And it was showing us in the news that a nine-year-old child, you hear me well? A nine-year-old child, and I could say black child, graduated from high school with honors. Who does that at nine years old? Oh man, what a blessing that was. And, I, and we all enjoy seeing children come out and do God's will. We all enjoy seeing young folk uh, educate themselves with the Word of God, and not only with the Word of God, but in their school programs. And it, it, it's sad that so many young folk are being led astray because a lot of people do not want them to have the Word of God on their heart. So we want you young folk to listen to uh, those who are teaching you. Please listen to who they, those who are teaching you uh, what you need to learn in order to be successful in life. If you want to be successful, then you really need, need to get into the habit of studying your word and study. One thing that we we had had uh, in schools was the simple fact that the teachers would tell the parent if you wasn't doing very well in school and the parents would get up and go up there and not shake the teacher up but go up there and say to their children, this is your teacher and this is who we expect for you to listen to and obey while you're in her classroom or his classroom. And so I say, let us all do everything. And so then, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, 18, 19, and 20. Go into in all the world and teach all nations. And I, I, I think this is very important. Watch what he says. In the name of the Father, what? In the name of the Son, what? and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Now that's where the orders are coming from heaven. And he wants us to teach these words. Teaching them what? To observe all things that I have commanded you, even unto the end of the world. Young folk, you don't know when the end of the world is coming, but you can know by obeying the word while you're being taught. And I'm saying to you that I'm going to work hard to try to get you to see and understand. I'm not going to browbeat other churches. I'm going to put the Word of God out. And if it's the Word of God and if it's different from somebody else's teaching, then you need to get 
your life right by looking into the scripture. Only God, you hear me? Only God gives the commandment and uh, he selects the messengers that's going to bring the word of God. So these are supplied to Jesus when he was here because Jesus needed him to help him and he want you and I to help him to do the very best that needs to be given. He's going to tell the truth. He's not going to lie. Neither one of them in heaven can, will tell a lie. They're going to tell you what the Father has sent them to do. Not one earthly creature, not one earthly creature was involved in building the Lord's church. It was Christ that built the church. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy to say. You know, the question was asked, and I, I, I started to read it a few minutes ago, but I knew I had it later on in, in, in this book and in my lesson. But in Matthew 16, 13 through 19, only Peter was able to tell those people when Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, when he told them who he was. For flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. He taught them that. And he wanted them to teach the word just like it was given. And so we need to look in, into the Bible. Don't go out there and get you a novel. Don't go out there and buy a bunch of dirty books and look at them. And don't go out there and, and just pick up something and start reading and say, Well, God, God's, going, God's a, God, a man of love and he, he got to love us. He never stopped loving us. He never stopped loving us. But he will punish us. He will punish us. And I don't know whether your parents got you, but my parents got me. And every so often, I felt it somewhere else. I didn't feel it across my head. Didn't feel it across my shoulders. I felt it on the part that God gave them to teach us a good lesson. Well, let me just tell you what. There is a lot of fabrication being taught in churches today. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Man has come up with a plan, and man's plan is not going to get you into heaven. Only, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Only God's plan will get you into heaven, and I want you to know that. A manufactured lie. <laughs> a manufactured lie. Uh, it is the uh, constructed by diverse and various people because they feel like they are smart enough to teach us what we need. I want to hear what the Lord has to say. Blessed is he that heareth these sayings of mine and do them. You get that? You got to hear his saying and then you have got to do what he has said. My third point. I want you to uh, consider is this that there are there are often people who know that you don't know very much about the scripture but then they want to try to be your teacher there are a lot of folk think drunk man uh, came to me one time and he said let me tell you what the Lord wants you to do and he was just reeling and rocking and I couldn't understand what the man was saying too much of what he was saying and so I said, sir, I don't, I don't believe anything. He, well, get on out of my face, he said. I got on out of his face, went on about my business. And you know what happened? About three nights later, that same drunk man was laying up in his house, and he didn't do what he needed to do about heating his house. It was cold. He burned up in that house. Now, that's not a, a joke, and that's not a lie, and that's just not something I'm trying to scare you with. Live three houses down from where we live. And I tell you, the fireman was saying to us, get back to your home, because we don't know what will happen, and we have been trained to take care of these kinds of things. So you need to be out of the way. Stay out of the way. So point number three, point number three is what I want you to understand is that uh, stop trying to be Christ. No earthly man has this ability. Can, he can't do what God has intended for his own son. He intended for his son to come and teach us the word of God. 
and show us the way home. Notice, Christ is the head of the church on earth. And I will share this one more point with you. And I want you to understand, Christ is the head of the church. Nobody else is the head of the church. It's Christ. It's Christ. I know, I know, uh, sometimes men think that because they have a uh, certain amount of authority, that they're the head. No, they're not. We have to listen to God's word. And when we listen to God's word, uh, we must understand uh, that we have to do what the word say. You can't add to the word, and you cannot take that out that you don't like that is in the word. And so I'm inviting you to take the time, study the word, and let God help you to see what he want you to do. And so I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you uh, as a preacher to, to take time in reading your Bible. Study the scriptures every single day. Search the scriptures every single day. As sure as you're going to eat, take some of this, the Word of God, and teach the Word like God intended it to be taught. And I'm saying to you, don't worry about what men do. Worry about what God has said. Because these are the words that are going to judge us in the last days. And so I say to you and to other preachers who are trying to get you to stay where you are, now, uh, don't try to stay where you are. Look in the Bible. Follow the Scriptures. Do what the Scripture says. And know for sure that if you want to go to heaven when life on earth has ended, you need to be in Christ. Amen. You need to be in Christ. So I'm, I'm encouraging you to get into Christ and I'm going to tell you how to get into Christ. You cannot just join the church of your choice. It's not your choice. You do what he say. Christ came. He suffered. He bled. He died on the cross. That you and myself and others like us. Could have a right to the tree of life. And so that's why he built his church. He is going to add. Those who will obey his word, those who will heed his teaching, those who will believe in him and have faith in him and believe that God sent him down here to die on a old rugged cross for you and me. He did that so that we could live in heaven with he and his father. I beg you. I beg you, listen to the Word of God. Listen to the Word of God. If you hear from the Bible, God's Word, follow what the Bible says. Listen to the Word of Christ. Blessed is he that heareth these sayings of mine. That's Christ. Not shall, but hear the sayings of Christ. Shall must say what Christ has said. And that's why I'm trying my best to live the Christian life. I want to tell you, you've got to hear God's divine word. you got to hear it. And once you hear God's word, once you hear God's word, you need to know for sure that God puts your name on his record. Then you must believe God's word. It's so important for you to believe in God's word and, and believe that you have to do the things that God has asked us all to do. That's all he's asking us to do is to hear and believe. And if we believe his word, we can be saved in the end. But know, know this for sure. You can't just have it your way. You've got to have the word of God. So once you hear God's word, believe it. Believe his word. And do what his word has said. Then, after you believe, you've heard it, you must believe it. Now, he's not giving us this word 
to just throw it aside. I don't have to listen to that. Yes, you do. I say it again. Blessed is he that heareth these sayings of mine and do them. You get that? So you, you got to believe in the word of God. And then <clears throat> you must repent of sin. All of us have sinned in this world. That's knowledgeable of God's word. So when you sin, you must repent of the sin you've committed. Yes, yes, you got to repent of all your sin. And, 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 and no, no, the thing that makes it so good for us is when you repent, that means you drop off all that mess that you've been doing and all that stuff you've been doing and all that stuff you've been drinking and shooting in your vein. You got to stop all of that. Amen. And smoking that vapor and all that vapor and all of that. You need to hear God's word and repent of your sins. Then you must confess Jesus Christ as God's son. Once you confess Jesus Christ as God's son, God is well pleased with what you have done because that's who he sent to teach us his word. And Christ taught the disciples who later became apostles. I'm not an apostle. I'm just a preacher of the word of God. And I want to preach nothing but the word of God. And so after you repented and confessed that Jesus Christ is God's son, there's one other thing you must do. You must go down in that water, regrave of baptism, and have your sins washed away. Guess who washes your sins away? The Lord Jesus Christ. It was his blood that was shed so that you and I could have our sins washed away. There's no man on earth got a, the kind of blood that can clean your life up. You got to have God's word. And so I say, mothers and fathers, as sure as you ask your children, and they, when they come in, most of them come home a little hungry. And they want to know, Mom, can I have this? Can I have that? Yes, go ahead. Get you something. But uh, uh, when you get through eating, I want you to get back in here and get your assignment out so that you can be ready for the teacher tomorrow. That's what we need. We need people that will encourage their children to follow the teacher, to do what the teacher says. Only because the teacher is teaching you from the book that you want to learn from. And I beg you to put all of this in your mind in your brain and go off and become a successful person. If you want to be successful, if you want to be successful, follow Jesus. Amen. Listen to your teachers. I urge you to listen to those that are teaching you in schools. And now they're trying to make the children controllers of the school. Nah, nah, that's the parents' job. And my children couldn't go to school and do what they wanted to do. Guess what? Neither could I. How many whoopings did I get on my bus? How many were Because I wouldn't listen to the man driving the bus. But when he got home, I had no idea that he was going to walk up to the house. I was glad one day uh, that uh, my mother and father wasn't there. And I was glad one day that uh, he walked up there and they were there. It had been raining. He couldn't go to work. And so he says, well, is your dad here? I said, yes, sir. He's sleeping. Is your mama here? I said, yes, sir. She's cooking. Well, go get your mama because I know she can cut the fire down or whatever she's cooking. But guess who came behind my mother? He heard somebody at the door. My daddy did. He came. He said, "Well, uh, we have a we have a case in the back of the bus." And uh, Charles decided he's going to look in the case and get some stuff and squirt it on some some of the students. And he said, "Well, you know what you need to do. Right out there with other students on the bus, my daddy pulled off his belt." 
and gave me a whipping and then handed the belt to the man. He said, no, I don't want to do that. He said, but any time you have a problem with out of my kids, I'll be up to the school tomorrow and tell the principal, you have the right, don't just beat my kid, but you have the right to teach them what's right. May God bless you. This is the Grand Avenue Church of Christ. We encourage all parents to help your children learn the scriptures too. They need to know the scripture because in them you think you have eternal life, but the scriptures are they which testify of Christ. I beg you, Mama, Daddy, Grandmama, Grandpa, if you can help your children, and if you cannot, if you cannot, find out what my number is from the Grand Avenue Church of Christ, and we will be happy to come by and encourage your children in studying God's divine word. I thank you. This is the Church of Christ getting ready to sign off, sign off, and I thank you all for tuning us in. May God bless you, all of those who are sick. We're going to have a word of prayer now and get started, please. Eternal God, we're so grateful for the many blessings that you have blessed us with. We're so grateful for the food and shelter and the protection you give to us in this wicked world. We ask you, Lord, to continue to bless God and keep us and help us to continue to study the Word where we can be clear in your teaching and teach people what they need to know in order to be saved. Thank you for the Grand Avenue Church of Christ and all those who worship with us and those brothers that help us to get the Word out, those sisters that help us to get the Word out, those sisters that that have time that's not working to go by and visit some of our sick folk. Thank you so very much for your many, many blessings. More sisters ought to get involved. And uh, I'm going to have them to try and uh, give me all of that information as to where there are programs going on. May God bless you all. Bless each one of us. If you got sick folk in your house, uh, in your family, let me know. Give us a call and we'll talk to God about it. May God bless you. May he keep you forever and ever because you are in Christ. All right? God bless you. Thank you very, very much.